Hello, and welcome to the West Hartford Town Council virtual debate sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Greater Hartford and West Hartford Community Interactive. I am Libby Sweetek, a member of the Greater Hartford League, and I'm pleased to be joined here by Jennifer Evans and her staff of uh, West Hartford Interactive. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization which encourages informed and active participation by its citizens and government. The League of Women Voters has provided timers and screeners um, for each candidate and questions that may be submitted by the, the audience. We encourage the audience to submit questions during the debate. They can be submitted through the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, my, candidate, my screener is Cassie Backman. My timers are Nina Jero and Carol Mulready. Um, this is one of four candidate debates. Uh, we were originally scheduled to do three, but we have added an extra debate in order to accommodate one of the participants who is on military um, active duty and cannot like, be here. <clears throat> this debate will be conducted in a modified cumulative time. Each candidate will have a total of approximately eight minutes of response and rebuttal time. Closing remarks will also be limited to two minutes. Our timers will alert each candidate as their allotted time expires. Prior to airtime, a lottery was held to pick the responding order. Um, and we will reverse that when we get to the closing arguments. So let me introduce the candidates. Going first will be Adrian Billings-Smith, running as a Democrat. Going second is Leon Davidoff, also running as a Democrat and an, an incumbent on West Hartford Town Council. And third is Mark Merritt, running for a Connecticut party. Uh, questions will be answered. Uh, asked in order of uh, response. And once the question is asked, we hope to open the floor, trying to limit the time for each discussion to about two minutes or so, so that we can um, accommodate more than, than four questions. Okay, um, let us begin. The first question will go to Adrian Billings-Smith, and it has to do with money. How do you think the one-time COVID money coming to West Hartford should be spent? Well, thank you for having me here today. Um, I wanna thank the League of Women Voters and WHCI for giving us opportunity. Um, and I wanna say thank you to my fellow panelists for, for being here and giving your time and putting your name in. Um, when I think of where our money should go, I think it goes to, um, our future, but also the present people um, who were affected um, by um, by COVID. You know, our community, our resources, and I also think that we have to think, as uh, they said before um, in the the previous talk, we have to think about our future with this money. It has to be earmarked by 2023. But when we do that, we can put things into our infrastructure, um, into our schools, into our communities, and really make sure the money goes somewhere. So I think that, you know, we have to make sure um, we're putting things into our community, but also making that money work for us in the future, public safety, education, um, and, and those sorts of things. So I think that we have to be very smart and strategic in, in the ways that we we fund things with the money that we've given, given, been given from ARPA. Thank you. Would anyone else like to comment? Mr. Davidoff. <clears throat> uh, thank you. First, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and WHC. WHCI for uh, having this uh, community discussion so that our residents can be uh, better better informed about the candidates and their positions. Uh, thanks to uh, President Biden and the foresight to uh, come up with a, uh, a plan, American Rescue Plan, to help communities like West Hartford deal with the social and economic impacts um, that uh, the pandemic has caused uh, our community and communities across America. So uh, this Thursday, there will be a, a Finance Administration Committee meeting of which I chair. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, the uh, priorities and the suggestions on how we're going to uh, invest in our community. And uh, I've read, I've re I have read uh, various articles about this. And it's interesting to note that the communities that invest in economic development and in, its, and in their infrastructure in their community in a decade's time will be looked at as success stories compared to those communities 
who just uh, target and airmark the money for operating expenses. So I'm certain the way that West Hartford is such a well-run community, we will definitely be doing it so that the money that we have received from the federal government will have long lasting uh, impact on our community. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so uh, Mark, uh, I wanna say thank you again for the League of Women Voters for uh, hosting this along with Jennifer Evans and her team at WHCI uh, TV uh, for the opportunity again, as Leon and Adrian has said, it's an opportunity for the uh, voters and our neighbors here in West Hartford to learn a little bit more about us and, and what we're thinking about and how we help. I think the American Rescue Plan is an opportunity for us as a town to look at strategically, as uh, Leon mentioned, maybe from infrastructure items, but more importantly, how do we look and set th those funds up where we're getting it in, in parcels now, next year, and then have to spend by 2023. And how do we help and look at our students and our school system with regards to needs of falling behind potentially because of what COVID has impacted? And how do we provide the resources more to Tom Moore and community resource uh, officers um, and for, Tom, for Chief Riddick uh, to help protect and be safe with what we're trying to do? I think it's an opportunity for us to come together and talk about some of these ideas and solutions that we can act, up, act upon and how it betters our town. Um, 25 million was given to the town in general funds, and we had 10 million allot allotted uh, for the Board of Ed. Uh, one of the things too also it would be noted is that the ventilation system in some of our schools um, need to be upgraded. And how do we put that in a long-term track as, a as Leon mentioned, from an infrastructure perspective, that is gonna be critical. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have a question from the audience again already. Um, Cassie, would you like to read that? Yes, so we have a question for all three of you. It's vital that government reflect the community it serves. How does your slate reflect West Hartford? And I'll let you, Libby, decide who goes where. Yes, by, by order um, of assignment, um, it's Leon Davidoff's turn. Uh, uh, thank you, great question. And, uh, if you look at uh, the Democratic uh, ticket on town council, you'll notice that uh, we have uh, three women, uh, three men uh, seeking office. Uh, we have uh, two people of color. Our Board of Education has uh, a member of, of color uh, running as well. We have women uh, candidates. Uh, I believe we have uh, uh, three women running. And our slate, and, and, and this isn't by accident, reflects the makeup of our community because we as Democrats understand that in order to govern and to lead a community, you have to look like our community. And uh, not only are we uh, gender and uh, race uh, uh, diverse, we're also economically diverse as well. Uh, so I think that's uh, quite important. Um, and it just will uh, bring better discussion to the table on a variety of issues uh, that will come before either the Board of Education or the Town Council. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Mr. Merritt. Thank you. Why, um, while there are three men and one woman uh, running as town council here, um, and we also have a gentleman running for Board of Ed who has uh, young children in the school system, what I'm proud about is what we've started here as an A Connecticut party and the infrastructure that we have behind us and the vast uh, diversity we have, both from a generational perspective. Um, we also have folks of, of different colors and races that are also uh, members uh, of our back office uh, team and helping us. And I'm excited about that. And while three, four of us are the front of what we're trying to create here and creating a more open and welcoming community, this is our first chance to actually share with the voters and the, our residents who we are, what we're standing for as it relates to having a dialogue, solutions, ideas, and action. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Smith, Billing Smith, sorry. It's okay. Um, I echo, you know, what Leon says, you know, it has to be intentional. And in when you're, you're, you're choosing the candidates that you want to represent your town, um, I think that the Democratic Party has done a great job of ensuring that we have um, diversity within our, on our team. So we have people of color, women, um, we have the LGBTQI community being represented, we have income diversity, um, we're all spread out all over town. So we, we're hearing different voices. And when you have those voices at the table, um, you're doing what's best for your community and your residents. So I think you have to be very intentional um, about how you, you choose your team. And I appreciate the way that the Democratic Party leads and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that team. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Okay, I have a question about recycling. Um, do you think our recycling plans are up to date? Do you support applying, um, do you, I'm sorry, uh, what is your opinion regarding unit-based pricing? That is paying a waste collection fee based on your usage. And this question will be started by Mr. Merritt. Thank you, um, Libby, for the question. As it relates to the recycling, I, th I think it's important uh, that we took a look that everybody in our town has an opportunity to, to provide a little help for our environment. Um, with all the rains and the, and the uh, flooding that we have seen over the last number of months, you know, we are, there is some climate change that's happening. And how do we all do our little part uh, with re recycling, helping educate on what needs to be recycled, what can be solid waste? Um, as it relates to the unit-based pricing, I initially am skeptical of that, but I want to do more research for it and have a dialogue on it and how it affects all of our residents in, in all socioeconomic um, walks and how that applies. Um, earlier, there was a comment about a transfer station. How would that how would that work? How would it affect our town? Where would we be putting that transfer station? So I think it's an interesting conversation that we need to have because climate is happening. We and we we need to understand that the science is there about it and how we all do our little part in doing that one. Neighbors, brown um, brown bins, uh, the pink bags, and uh, maybe more recycling uh, pickup. But I know from historical perspective, having it every week, it really did not mean mean a lot. But maybe with more education and having recycling picked up uh, weekly, that could maybe put a dent in what we're doing here. But costs are going up as it relates to solid waste. Uh, I've talked to a number of town planners, and it's something that they're grappling with, and we need to address it. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to chime in? What about uh, the support for the state's sustainability grants to try new disposal or recycling markets? Is that an option? I would look at the details and what strings come attached with it. And then how is it applied? And again, that's kind of a conversation that we just need to have. Um, I'd love to have that with Leon and Adrian and the rest of the team um, at the committee level to really work it out and have um, ideas and solutions that we can put into action, right? So we want to come at this together and how we work at it together and find common ground. Okay, thank you again. Any comments from either Ms. Mrs. Davidoff or Ms. Ad uh, Billing Smith? Nobody wants to pick up the recycling Nobody uh, question? Nobody wants to pick it up. I guess not. Okay, we'll move on then. Cassie, do you have another question? No, not at this time. Okay, great. All right. Um, what What is your thinking on a balance of affordable housing versus market rate housing in town? Consider rental and home ownership. What role does zoning or should should zone, uh, zoning uh, have a a, um, a part in this? Um, we're going to start with Miss Billing Smith. Um, I think that uh, affordable housing is is an issue that we have to deal with. We have multiple types of housing within West Hartford, uh, multifamily zoning, single family zoning. Um, and I think that um, we, we continue to try to do our best. There's always room to grow and to collaborate to do better um, for our residents. And we want people to continue to move to move to West Hartford. So making sure that we do have mixed income housing um, is, is important. And I hope that we can do some things to help ensure that we're getting new buyers and helping um, even our buyers that are aging out with the ADU um, ordinance that was passed um, who want to be in a smaller place but still need to um, rev um, generate income, I think that um, affordable housing is an issue that has to be discussed and, and we just have to be creative and intentional in the ways that we 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 go forward in that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on affordable housing? Mar uh, Mr. Merritt, you have your hand up first. I did. I beat Leon to the punch on that one. Um, I think what it comes down to is uh, how do we help develop areas of our town to help provide more housing and more housing ability. Um, with regards to you know one park, for example, um, that's an opportunity for us to have more um, home ownership or apartments in an area of town to help develop that one from a small business perspective, but also an influx of revenue. Um, I know it was a topic, a uh, heated topic of conversation about it, but it was a property that was not generating any revenue to the town, and then it will generate revenue to the town forever. Right. So um, after everything's there and it has the private developers are committed to making workplace housing available. Um, there's another couple of developers looking at property here, parcels that will be multi-use. They are also wanting to have workplace housing that's available there. And I, I want us also uh, to have that conversation about where they're strategically we can look at things. Now that we have the community center that we're moving forward with, which I fully supported and I'm record of, of, of wanting to have that going up. And then how do we look at parcels of land for private development again to make it um an area of town that we can look at to, for development. 
And that is kind of what I would like to do uh, from an economic development perspective to help with regards to housing and affordability, um, having more people here. Um, all our prices have been going up because of people are moving into town. And also with regards with that, how do we help uh, manage that from our infrastructure perspective? So we need to have structural conversations too about that as we continue to grow as, an, as a town. Thank you. Mr. Davidoff, you had your hand up also. Uh, thank you. I, I would concur with a lot that uh, Adrian and Mark have uh, have mentioned. Uh, West Hartford is a very welcoming and attractive community to raise a family. People want to be in our community. As a fully developed uh, community in terms of land mass, uh, what's going to be very important is the redevelopment opportunities that present themselves, whether it be uh, in partnership with the government or with nonprofit organizations or even private developers. And uh, when one looked at the One Park proposal in particular, we had the Sisters of St. Joseph who were eight, who want to stay at their parcel, age in place there, but they knew that uh, their parcel was too big for them and uh, a great opportunity presented itself with respect to uh, bringing in uh, rental properties. And there's going to be on that particular parcel uh, market rate apartments for, for 10 years. And there's other um, developments in town uh, that uh, are also considering things like that. And there will be more to come in the next term of the council. Uh, while we have a lot of single family homes, multifamily homes, apartments, condominiums, uh, mansions, um, we all get together and we all want to be here. And I think that's the common theme. It's how do we accomplish that? And I think through reasonable common sense uh, discussions, uh, we will be a welcoming place for everyone, regardless of their uh, ability uh, to, uh, to to earn income, that's what makes our community so special. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to digital life. Uh, the pandemic um, brought to life how critical it is to have good infrastructure within town. Um, do our residents have? equal access to digital resources, students, job hunters, seniors? And what is the role of the town council regarding such access? And this question goes to Mr. Davidoff. Uh, thank you for the question. Great question. I, I would argue that uh, we definitely have um, a digital divide in our town. Um, that was apparent when our school system uh, was able to provide uh, Chromebooks to, to all our students but a lot of students didn't have internet access. And a lot of people in our community uh, still don't have uh, Wi-Fi access. And, and that's a challenge that we are going to have to meet so that uh, regardless of your income or where you live in town, uh, Wi-Fi is uh, readily accessible. We're not a rural community. Uh, we are a uh, uh, the suburban ring of our capital city and in 2021, uh, the internet and digital activity are paramount, paramount to our, our lifestyle. So it is really incumbent upon us to make certain that we don't leave behind any of our residents, regardless of uh, where they are on the age spectrum or the income spectrum. So I believe that uh, some of the rescue plan dollars will probably be committed to um, ensuring that uh, we improve our access to uh, digital um, capabilities. Thank you. Any other comments? I think one part, if I can, um, is why don't we look at certain areas of our town, there's city centers, we'll call them, or town centers, um, and provide free Wi-Fi. You know, there's a number of companies and have um, provided that for a number of communities. I've been blessed to travel the country and see how this has been working in certain markets and, and communities like ours. That free Wi-Fi is, you know, maybe Bishop's Corner, maybe it's in Elmwood, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's all of these places where we can utilize this uh, on an ongoing basis to provide uh, free Wi-Fi to certain areas of the town um, to help broad, broaden that reach. Thank you very much. I just want to second um, what what Leon said. Um, we do have a digital divide based on income and where, where folks live in. We are in a suburban area and we're in a thriving town. So I think it's incumbent of us to make sure that we're providing those sorts of services um, um, 
to our community, you know, and using some of that funding to ensure that we don't have that again, you know, something happens and our children have to go back, you know, God forbid, we have to go back into, you know, schooling from home, we want our children to have those opportunities and not feel um, secluded from their classmates any more than they already are. So I think it's really important that we start to have that discussion and, and we put some money toward that. And as, as Mr. Merritt said, you know, there are thriving communities that have free Wi-Fi. So I think there just has to be a discussion that's had so we can bring all of our ideas together and do what's best for West Hartford. Thank you. Okay, we had a question from the previous session or from one of our other sessions uh, regarding the town's infrastructure in regard to town buildings, schools, municipal buildings. Is it time to evaluate um, consolidation? Uh, we'll start with Mr. Merritt. Thank you, I guess, because uh, my, my counterpart started that conversation at the previous session. So um, I think it's important for us to have a dialogue on, on the lifespan of our municipal buildings. You know, we've talked about it recently with, with the Mayflower purchase and creating a potential community center. The Elmwood Community Center um, has been fantastic, um, but it is well over 100 years old. And um, how much more um, do you spend uh, into maintaining that and maybe leveraging that parcel for development again? And then the folks from Facts and Library were very supportive of doing the community center. Again, that parcel of land. How do we evaluate the lifespan and how much money? Um, I go back to the, uh, the movie Money Pit. So how much of that do we want to continue putting into buildings or we can modernize that can um, have a building that would last for years? So part of it is having a discussion, putting stuff and ideas on the table, um, not always uh, responding in a negative way uh, to ideas and solutions, but how do we put a dialogue together to talk about it um, that's going to be beneficial for the entire town, not just for the next two, three years, but how about 10, 15, 50 years? And so I do think that we should look at consolidation and going through the buildings based on their lifespan. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Okay. No, no one's not going to pick up that grill. No. What do you oh well, Miss Miss Billing Smith. I was I was just going to say um, I come from a town where we had the 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 two high schools and we it was the best of both you know it was the best of the town and being a parent of a West Hartford student you know we love the smaller, we move here for the education, right? That's why we come, that's how we get people here because we have the best schools in the state and our two high schools are top 10 in our county and our nation. So I think that, um, I don't know that it would be the best decision to consolidate. I mean, we have our capital improvement plan um, that we evaluate this every every year. Um, people who are doing the job, the town and 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 other employees, to ensure that our our children are in safe facilities, and we're doing our best to, for upkeep. I'm sure there's more that that can be done, but I think you know consolidating is not just um, about the building or the or the campus. It's about the the students that are going there. And, and want and and like that they they like that um, their high school pride. So I think we have to take that in consideration also. Thanks. Okay, thank, thank you. Can I can I get a um, a time in from the timers where we stand? Uh, yes, I have uh, Mr. Davidoff at five minutes uh, used. I have uh, Miss Billing Smith at uh, four minutes thirty seconds used. And uh, Mr. Merritt at five minutes, 40 seconds used. Okay, great. We have plenty of time. Let's keep going. Uh, last year's election um, saw some changes into the way in how we vote. Um, going forward, do you think that the town has resources to manage um, more changes? Um, the, the, you know, the state government picked up a lot of what needed to be done as far as expanding um, the capability of what we would call um, mail-in voting. Uh, call it what you want, but do we have the resources to go forward and expand our voting system? Uh, this question will go to Ms. Billingsmith. So I um, would hope that we have the resources um, to continue to provide um, mail-in ballots, as you said, or, or, or absentee ballots. Um, and those facilities, those drop boxes, I think they're really important to our democracy. They're important to voting. Um, I am not a part of, of the budget 
process at the moment, but it's something that I would definitely advocate for um, to ensure that our voters that are, are free to vote in any way that they seem deemed necessary um, and essential, especially because we don't know. Each day, um, things change and we're still in a pandemic right now. So I think it's something that we just have to continue to reevaluate as, as we move forward. Thank you. Gentlemen, Mr. Davidoff. I, I think it's paramount that uh, voters be given the opportunity to vote in, in a safe way. And as this pandemic has shown us, um, absentee voting uh, was a successful solution. A lot of the uh, dollars for that voting process came from the state of Connecticut last time. And uh, municipalities are always struggling for dollars uh, to provide that same thing. So it would be interesting to see whether or not our, our legislature uh, would uh, provide the necessary funding, uh, not only for the mail-in uh, ballots, but also for the uh, workforce necessary to process uh, those ballots, whether it be in the town clerk's office or assistance in the registrar of voters office. Thank you. Mr. Merritt, any comment? You good? I agree with both of them. Um, every vote matters. Every vote should count. And whatever way we can do to make sure every citizen uh, votes, I'm all for it. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question, and we will start with Mr. Davidoff. Uh, do you have any concerns for West Hartford regarding the impact of potential redistricting plans being worked on that are a result of the 2020 census? Mr. Davidoff. Uh, I, I really don't. I think that uh, our legislators uh, representing West Hartford are, are capable, capable uh, representatives, and they will make certain that they uh, take the necessary steps to um, make certain that uh, our, our community is well represented in the legislature. Okay, anybody else? Oh. Okay, I got one last question for you and we'll start with a yes or no. Um, Mr. Merritt, you're gonna start it. Uh, cannabis, should West Hartford allow a retail shop? That's part one. The second part is by statute, West Hartford must allow a space for consumption. How do we decide where to put it? That's Mr. Merritt. Thank you. I did put out a, uh, a commentary on that based on one of the questions. And what I will say is I think we need to take a measured approach in, in, in having one um, and making sure uh, it's in a location um, that we need to look at. Um, I also think we should have a lot of um, community input on this, both from a dispensary as well as open space. Uh, I know the statute allows for that if you have that. But I think we need the community involvement, a lot of public forums um, to be able to get a vast opinions on that. I, I think, you know, when I put cannabis along the lines, we don't have a space for open containers uh, for alcohol. And so I think there is a couple of things that we need to look at and discuss as an organ, as a town and also getting input from the from the residents itself. It, it's not a clear cut and dry. It's been approved um, for that. And I just want to make sure we do it in the right way um, that benefits all of West Hartford and that it's safe, a safe environment for that. Thank you. More comment. Okay. You are brave to take that one on. You gave me no choice for that one. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. I didn't. I'm, my apologies. Okay. <laughs> we'll throw you, we'll throw you something somewhere here. Um, okay. Um, let's, uh, do we still have more time? You guys have gone through nine questions. You're, you're ripping right through them. You're doing really well. Um, let's see. Can we do? Um, is PFCs um, a, a, a concern in, um, in West Hartford? Um, they seem to be creeping into the groundwater in surrounding communities. Uh, at what point do we need to um, stand up and really take notice? PFCs, did I say? I'm sorry, uh, Libby, I didn't catch the first part of that. PFCs, the uh, perfluorocarbons, the forever pollutants that are popping up in the wells in, in the state. At what point does West Hartford need to stand up and take notice? I know we are not exactly on a well system, but um, it, it seems to be uh, pervasive in the area. And when do we need to stand up and take notice? That would be Ms. Billing Smith. Um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that question. No, I know. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it's important to evaluate, obviously. Um, Right now, I, I the town is working on ensuring that, you know, we're, <laughs> I'm so sorry, you know, evaluating the safety of our water, 
dealing with stormwater issues. I think that funding is being used to probably run reports on that sort of thing. That's nothing, that isn't something that I'm very familiar with at the moment, but I would assume that West Hartford, if it's needed, then the, the leadership of West Hartford is making sure that we're at least researching and evaluating the, the situation. And I would hope that, to be a part of that also, if that's an issue that we need to be dealing with right now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davidoff, did, is, is this on town council's radar? Is uh, the permanent um, pollutants on town council's reservoir? Is there a resolution? Is there? Uh, to be honest with you, we have not discussed this in uh, any committee meeting that I've gone uh, to, but I am certain though, if, uh, if, if need be, uh, we would be definitely proactive and responsive. Okay, thank you. Yep, something be, Mark? Uh, yep. On that note, I think the best person from my, um, my team would be Rick Bush, who will be in the next session. Right, he's been very actively involved. He's an MDC commissioner, but he has been also firsthand knowledge of what happens with storm um, water and also uh, sewage. Uh, with regards to that, and he has been really actively involved in looking at that. We do have an infrastructure problem when it comes to that, so he would be the best person to, uh, to maybe address that. Okay, thank you very team. much. Do we have time for one more question? I'm asking um, our monitors. Jen? Okay, Cass, go ahead. All right, so we have one that really relates to a lot of the previous questions in several ways, but in a few seconds, let's say, you know, a minute or 30 seconds, what are your plans for the Yukon West Hartford branch property that's been sitting there, if any, and how does this benefit West Hartford? So I'll let you decide who goes first. Oh, um, I believe that would be Mr. Davidoff. Uh, great question. Um, so I'll just fast forward to where we are today. Uh, it's my understanding that FinTech has uh, been in negotiations with a uh, private uh, entity uh, to sell the parcel to them. Uh, they're currently doing their due diligence and uh, we'll see hopefully by the end of the year whether or not that property will uh, be transferred. Uh, as, as one knows, the uh, town did not purchase uh, that property uh, when the opportunity presented itself because of concerns over uh, environmental risk. So right now uh, the, the property is in the hands of private individuals and the town is, is not a party to that transaction, even though we are um, encouraging them to, to reach a resolution that will be in the best interest of our community. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, oh, go ahead, Mr. Merritt. Um, I think, you know, working um, with the potential new owners of that property, how do we how do we put a vision in place to make sure that we secure the Miracle League field and the Little League fields and expand more open space on the east side of Trout Brook? Um, I've been very active in talking about that with residents while door knocking is how do we have a vision for that maybe to approach them if we are financially able to to acquire that land and making it more of an open space and adding on to the, the Miracle League fields and Little League fields there as more of a community space. Um, and that could range with a number of different things, multi-use field, maybe a dog park, uh, something like that, that would be more open space for that east side of Trout Brook. And, but again, that will have to be something that we need to decide as a town if we can financially and fiscally be able to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Billing-Smith, anything to add? No, I just want to ensure that the uh, corporation that is there or takes over uh, the Yukon property is puts West Hartford, uh, it's for West Hartford's best interest and the vision is for the community of West Hartford. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, we will um, draw this portion of the uh, program to a close and move on to our closing statements. Um, Mr. Mira, you went last in the questioning. That means you go first on the closing on, um, statements. Uh, timers, uh, give everybody two minutes, please. I think you can start when you're ready. Okay. Uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters of Greater Hartford, uh, as well as WHCI-TV, uh, for the opportunity again to talk with the community and our neighbors about um, a Connecticut party, myself, and our vision for the town. You know, I've been proud to call West Hartford my home for the past 28 years and have been lucky enough to raise uh, three children here in town with my wife, Mike Lee. And um, I've taken an active role in our community from reaching, uh, from coaching youth sports, volunteering in our school system, public school system, an active member of our Jewish community, as well as serving the community at large. I enjoy giving back and helping others. That is why I am running for town council. Um, my professional career has been in the financial services industry, working together with people in a collaborative environment to help businesses meet their many challenges in a sometimes difficult economy. 
I currently work as head of distribution for a startup. So I understand the, the, the power of a startup, but also the, the challenges that comes with that to help address and look at a number of different things with our community and asking questions and looking at alternatives and solutions. And then while I look at my three children and I think about their future in our town, it's clear why I am running because I want them to have the same opportunities that I've had, that my wife and I have had to raise them and earn a living, but also enjoy the diverse community that we have. This is why also I started a Connecticut party. A Connecticut party reflects cons fiscal conservative values and promotes dialogue on our social issues, as you probably have seen here tonight. You know, we're not going to be beholden to any party, party ideology. We want to come up with solutions and ideas, and we want to put things into action. We want to work with folks to help um, address quality of life initiatives, economic and business development, safety and security concerns, as well as we want to financially modernize how we are looking at our budgets and our future. As I mentioned, our community is diverse and engaged, requires an alternative view on how we should approach governing. You know, we want to hear from everybody. The current dynamics of our national and state political landscape needs a break from political divide and to have a voice that is based on moderate perspectives, conversations, respect, and it's something that we can create unity. We created a rational alternative for you folks in, in the town of West Hartford. I hope you will join our cause, make West Hartford the town we know we all can be, and I ask for your vote on November 2nd. Thank you again for everybody, and thank you for participating. Thank you. Mr. Davidoff, your closing remarks, please. I'd first like to thank all the candidates who have stepped up this election cycle uh, to uh, run. It, it's great to see uh, such engagement in a community such as ours. People ask me, why am I running again? And the answer is quite simple. I just truly enjoy serving our community. Throughout the pandemic, as the deputy mayor, I actively participated in council discussions and decisions to address the well being of our community. I'm grateful to the efforts of our first responders, our teachers, our essential workers, as well as all the community leaders who work together. Because of the pandemic, there's still work to be done that requires knowledgeable, steady, and experienced leadership. I am prepared, committed, and eager to meet this challenge. West Hartford's a diverse, welcoming, and vibrant community. Our property values remain high and our town is the best place to live, to work, and to raise a family. You can count on me to demonstrate steady leadership, good governance, and fiscal responsibility. I take pride in being a good listener, arriving prepared for meetings, whether they be in person or on WebEx, and actively participating in the discussions at the council table. I'm proud of the strong working relationships that I have built with town staff and my colleagues. My priorities are your priorities. I will continue to support budgets that maintain services and programs, such as excellent award-winning schools, fantastic recreational programs, outstanding libraries and senior centers, and professional public safety services. During this pandemic, we witness how important all these services and programs are to our community. My well-reasoned approach to the issues that the council faces will continue to be necessary as our community addresses the social and economic impact of the pandemic. My years of experience, coupled with my dedication and leadership skills, uniquely qualify me to continue serving on our town council. On November 2nd, please vote for me, Leon Davidoff, so I can continue to make a great town even better and the entire Democratic team so that we can be responsible, responsive, and ready to lead our community in the next two years. Thank you for this opportunity uh, from the League of Women Voters and for WHCI for allowing us to express our viewpoints to our very engaged and informed West Hartford electorate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Billings-Smith, your closing argument, please. Thank you. I want to again say thank you to the League of Women Voters and to the other panelists and of course the res residents of West Hartford for giving us your time tonight. I am proud to be joining a team that has done an excellent job governing during our, a pandemic, ensuring that our families are safe and our businesses have the, had the ability to stay open, all while doing its best to uphold the values when it comes to education, diversity, and inclusion and continuing to ensure that our town budget is used and allocated, allocated to what is best in terms of services and programs for West Hartford. I'm running for town council because I believe I can help to move our town toward those goals and values. 
specifically continue to stay people and community focused when deciding on policies and making sure they meet the goal of equity and equality. And by ensuring our residents from New Britain Ave to my little corner of West Hartford feel seen, heard and represented in our decisions. That includes how our budget is allocated, whether that be the services and programs we provide for our citizens, helping small businesses continue to thrive, and ensuring we, have, we are being innovative when, innovative when it comes to town improvements. My family and I moved to West Hartford because we wanted to ensure our children had the best education, while also ensuring they were living in a diverse, safe, and welcoming community. Over the last eight years, I have been proud to call West Hartford my home. I have involved myself in the community from PTO to town appointments, most recently the Civilian Police Review Board, and starting my own organization to ensure those very values are a reality for my child and my family. I believe in the power of working together. When we all work together, we benefit, benefit from different perspectives. Even when we disagree, that still creates strong partnerships and relationships and helps build a better town because the voices and concerns of our community are being respected. I, like a lot of folks that I've spoken to while canvassing, want safe neighborhoods, vibrant commercial centers, livable wages, affordable housing options, support for our public servants, and even the ability to share the roadway with bikers. And of course, most importantly, continuing to have the best schools in Connecticut. There's nothing that we cannot do together. And if you believe in those things, then row A is your team of candidates. I ask you for your vote November 2nd and wish you nothing but the best and Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank all the candidates for their time, their responses, and their patience uh, throughout this debate. Uh, we hope this debate assists you, the voting public, when you go to the polls on Election Day, November 2nd. Um, all, four, all four town council debates, along with a Board of Education debate, will be available on WHC-TV, WHCI, during the month of October and on their YouTube channel. Go to WH. CTV.org. Um, also, visit the league's website to get to know your candidates um, better. Uh, they will have biographies as, long and, as well as answers to some written questions that were submitted to them. Um, you can also find out uh, about your registration and uh, where you are scheduled to vote. And you can also file for an absentee ballot there. The Secretary of the State um, offers a website, um, and the town register also has, has um, sites and you can go to myvote.ct.gov slash lookup. <clears throat> I wanna thank everybody again, um, timers and candidates and uh, technical staff, and I bid you good day.